Okay. All right. Um, you know, first of all, um, you know, it's still, uh, you know, the finality of everything is, is so sudden. I think, uh, you know, for us right now, the first thing that we're going to do is kind of catch our breath, uh, let the dust settle, get away and really evaluate everything. Um, whether it's free agents as we move forward. Um, and, you know, I think it's important that we continue to establish a high level of competition at all spots. Um, continue to do a better job looking inward. You know, I, I know I've got to, you know, I always want to try to be self-reflective, you know, but whether it's coaches, players, everything that we do, we want to continue to try to evaluate, reflect, do it at a higher level and, and trying to find ways to continue to be relevant and competitive. Um, and also, you know, give yourself a chance to continue your season past, you know, these positions. While not minimizing, there was a lot of good things that our players and our coaches did to get yourself in a position to be in the divisional round. Uh, but you start over. Um, every single year entails a bunch of change, whether it be good or bad. And that's where we're in the evaluation mode right now. But I do think, um, you know, the best way to make those sound decisions and then the competitive decisions that I think are necessary for you to really press the envelope uh, from all angles is to really take a step back, then give yourself a chance to really look at it, um, you know, with a good perspective, the right perspective, and then, uh, and then be able to make decisions, whether it's free agents, starters, different things like that as we move forward. But the, the competition, the environment, the atmosphere, talked with a couple of players about that. Uh, everybody earning their spots. I think that's something that we want to continue to try to really create and, and make sure that that competition is present and relevant in everything that we do. Um, and uh, looking forward to attacking that opportunity, but also catching our breath and, and taking a step back as well. Kevin. Sean, you were asked at, uh, after the game yesterday, right at the end of the, the Zoom session, is Jared Goff the quarterback? You gave a pretty short answer. I wonder if you could elaborate. Yeah, just like I said, everything's being evaluated. I'm not ready to make any sort of statements with regards to anybody, you know, starting position or not. Uh, we're going to have a level of competition at everything that we do. And so um, that's where we're at. And I think, uh, you know, being able to take a step back, catch our breath and, and evaluate everything as we move forward and try to be at our best. That's that's my answer to the question. Mm -hmm. I don't think we normally pick over exact word choice, but words can matter. And uh, some people heard you say uh, he, yesterday that he's the quarterback right now. And some people just heard you say he's the quarterback, right? What was the, the sense? Yeah, of what, what, I'm, what I'm evaluating is everything that we do, Kevin. That, that includes the quarterback position, but that includes everything. And so that's where we're at. And, uh, and I think it's important for, like a, I was kind of saying, to be able to take a step back, catch our breath, uh, be able to look at everything that the season encompassed and figure out the best way to create the most competitive situations at all spots uh, and what we can do to continue to take steps in the right direction. And that's not exclusive to the quarterback, but, um, you know, it's, it's all encompassing to our entire roster. Thank you. You're welcome. Jordan. Hey, Sean, obviously lots of moving parts uh, next couple of weeks and lots of self-scouting to do. But as it stands right now, other than, um, you know, whatever potential opportunities come along for the positive, are you thinking you're going to be keeping your assistance intact via your own choices? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, like I said, you know, all things are up for evaluation, Jordan. Uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of, you know, Brandon's got a busy schedule today and tomorrow. And so I think uh, anytime that you have those situations arise, you know, that's one of the most gratifying things is, you know, to see somebody do such a great job like he's done, in a, you know, all, also along with our defensive coaches and then ultimately our players making it come to life. That, that's, that's outstanding. And even sometimes, obviously, if, if you were to lose them, um, you know, that's a tough loss for the Rams, but but that's also really a, a unique thing to see him come in, do such a great job, and then immediately be uh, a prime candidate for a lot of these openings and when you realize how precious these opportunities are. So I think it's a fluid situation. It's something that, uh, you know, you got to monitor and you've got to be ready to adjust and, and adapt accordingly if we do end up losing a, a great coach like Brandon. But that's something that, uh, you know, that's kind of, and you just look at just the schedule and the way that the offseason is set. First order of business is your staff. Then what you do is you evaluate, you know, your players, your personnel, and then be able to kind of put a plan of attack accordingly based on free agency, draft, things of that nature. I guess I'm wondering less so about maybe like the, the opportunities part of it and more so, um, you know, were you happy with, with Kevin? Were you happy with Bonamego? Are you thinking that those positions will stay intact 
and then trickling down. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. And I think the other thing too, is when you look at what a unique year it's been, Jordan, I mean, this has been so different than anything I've been a part of coaching wise, especially when you think about, you know, guys coming in the first year and some of the, you know, the changes and the different things that you had to navigate through. Um, but I do think it's important that, you know, when everything is so fresh, there's so many emotions and you're still so, you know, surprised. Cause I don't think, you know, I, I had so much respect for the Packers, but we went in there with the ex expectation to say, let's watch this game coming up here in the afternoon and hopefully see, you know, are we traveling to Tampa or New Orleans to go try to play for a conference championship? And so the finality of it all, you know, you kind of just try to stay fully present and locked in. And then once you realize, man, the season's over, I mean, you know, you're dealing with the exit physicals today, talking to some of these players, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, you're thinking you're hopefully putting off for a couple weeks that, that needs to be dealt with in a timely manner with consideration to everybody that's involved. And so that's why I think it's important, you know, in the few years, I think you just take a step back, catch your breath, and then be able to, to make the right decisions while also being considerate of everybody involved. Thanks. You're welcome. Claudia. Sean, when you look at the season with the playoffs, um, you finished with a better record than people predicted. Plus, you won a playoff game. And, and with this game against the Packers, you stood with them till the fourth quarter. Despite losing, there must be things that make you proud of this team. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's a good question, Claudia. I, I think... Um... I think the further away you get from just the feeling that you have right now, the more appreciation that you'll gain. But I'm very appreciative of our players, our coaches, all the work and really our staff. You know, I mean, you look at the work that it took to just be able to pull the season off in spite of all the obstacles that we had to overcome. I love the way that this team was resilient. You know, it, it was part of what was a frustrating thing because we weren't able to string together a handful of wins, but we were able to consistently respond and get a couple wins. And then you find a way to have to respond from a setback. But there was a lot of positives. I thought we saw a lot of young players step up. I thought we saw, you know, the rise of a, a really special defense. And, um, you know, I'm excited about the opportunity to evaluate and move forward. But I am very appreciative of this team. I'm proud of a lot of the things. But I think you'll get more appreciative. And you can look back on it with a better, you know, feeling of it the further you get away. But because of the confidence I had in this group, I am disappointed that we're still not playing. And and, and that's a compliment to the, you know, confidence I had in the, in the team and, and the group of, uh, you know, men that, that we were all working with. Lindsay. Sean, I uh, understand that you guys are still evaluating, letting the dust settle, but how would you um, evaluate yourself as a play caller this year? Yeah, I, I think you go back and you look at it. And I think, um, you know, I, I think the first thing is you always got to look inward and you've got to be critical. And there's a handful of times, every single game that you're not proud of it. And, um, uh, then there was a lot of times when you, you did feel like, you know, you were getting some looks that you had hoped for and sometimes it worked out and sometimes it didn't. And so uh, I do feel very confident in our coaches and our ability to put together a game plan, feel good about the way that we're seeing the game uh, as it unfolds. And, and um, you know, there's a lot of times where I've had a bad, bad play call that the players make right. Um, you know, you look at it, you know, there wasn't a real clean look on Cam Akers touchdown run, but he found a way to run through a couple broken tackles and, you know, it seems like a good play call, but that's not really a good play call. That's just a great player making a great play. So I think there's always a give and take there, Lindsay. But um, I'd like to think that I'm the first one to look inward. I have high expectations and standards for myself and for our offense. And this year was not up to par in a lot of reasons. And that's something that I'm excited about attacking. But I do still feel confident in my ability to do that at a high level. And then just with your emphasis uh, in your opening statement on competition, is quarterback one of the positions that you would like to create more competition at? Yeah, every position is, Lindsay, and that's kind of what I was saying. And so, you know, I know that uh, there's, there's a lot made, and, you know, that's such a high-profile position, but I think the important thing is, is, you know, not making any blanket statements right now while it's all so fresh, but I do think the, the overall theme of competition, that atmosphere, that environment where you're earning it every single day and making it feel real, making it feel true and authentic is, is something that we want to try to create. And I think, you know, I talked to a couple of our players about that today, and I think that's something that'll be helpful uh, of increasing the level of competition, the urgency and everything that we want to do at a little bit higher level. And um, those are some of the things that the immediate reflection um, kind of gives some feedback, really gives some insight to, if you will. Gary? John, um, you've talked about uh, competition at the end of your first three seasons, but this is the first time uh, that the quarterback actually, it seems like, is entering that realm. What changed for you? Why Why now with Jared? It's, it's really, I, I'd say it's just, you know, I think as you grow, as you continue to learn, 
Um, that's just where we're at. And I'm not, uh, I'm not saying anything other than, you know, we're evaluating that right now. Um, and I think it's important that you do that at every single spot and no position is, uh, you know, excluded from that conversation, Gary. But what does um, Jared have to do in the, what do you want to see him do in the off season um, that would, you know, give you confidence in him coming back? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the first thing is, is kind of like I said, Gary, you want to take a step back catch your breath, evaluate, be able to really make some sound decisions, be able to give some clear insight into what is the plan of attack moving forward for all spots. Um, and kind of like I was saying, you know, the quarterback is no different, but for me to be able to, uh, you know, to fully answer that, I think those are conversations that, you know, you have between your players first um, and, and to be able to, you know, have the right plan of attack. I think you got to be able to tech, take a step back, ev evaluate the entirety of it, but what I will say that you certainly can't take away that I mentioned to you guys each of the last couple of weeks for him to come back from a thumb surgery, do what he did in Seattle, do what he did yesterday. Uh, very, uh, you know, it's a real credit to him, his competitiveness, his resilience. And uh, I think there's a lot of positives from that. And then finally, I'm sorry. Uh, is there any scenario that you can see where Jared would not be on the roster next year? You know, like I said, Gary, we're, we're in a situation that we're in evaluation mode. Um, you know, all those things are things that, you know, we're, we're moving forward. We're looking forward. And, and I can't, you know, answer any of those questions until, like I said, I take a step back and, and you evaluate everything that uh, is in the best interest of the Rams. Stu. Hey, Sean, from a health and injury standpoint, how did the team come out of last night's game? And then in addition to that, are there any guys, whether they, been on injured reserve or not that will need any kind of cleanup or um, off-season procedures of any kind to get those injuries fixed? Yes, yeah, Stu, I'll have to get with really Reggie on the entirety of it. I know he was kind of finishing up the exit physicals and, and all that stuff. Um, fortunately, it didn't seem like there was any major setbacks from yesterday's game. Um, and as far as kind of, there, there's always a handful of guys that, that go into the off-season and, and you say, all right, we want to get this cleaned up. And, you know, this looks like it's going to be another, um, you know, unpredictable offseason. What does that look like in terms of our ability to connect, have, a, have an offseason that's reflective of what we're all familiar with from years past prior to this past season? Um, so I have to connect with him and, and um, don't have all that information right now, Stu. Mark. John, were there times at all this year where your play calling was affected by um, – possibility that you didn't have the the deep threat the guy to take the top off the defense like when you had cooks I know people had mentioned that they thought that was a deficiency and is do you look at that as an area of need yeah you know I, I think um Brandon was a huge contributor um did so many great things for us in those couple years Mark um I don't want to take away from the confidence I had in our players that, that are currently and that were a part of this team Mark but I definitely think that that you did feel um, you know, not having Brandon this year. You know, what does that mean? I think that's something that is important to look at. That's, uh, that's a part of the things that, uh, you know, you always want to make sure, you know, that you find ways to create explosives. And the long explosives and some of the shots down the field wasn't as uh, prevalent as years past. And I think it made it a lot more difficult. And your margin for error is much slimmer as an offense when you feel like you've got to go 10 and 13 plays to score touchdowns. And um, you know, you want to be efficient, but you want to be explosive as well. And I think um, both of those things can go hand in hand. Look no further than the offense we saw yesterday. I think they're a great example of why. And when we've been at the upper echelon of the league, there's a combination of efficiency and explosiveness. And I think you do have to have both of those to be a really good offense. And uh, we weren't as explosive in, in some of those things specific to the past game as we've been in years past. And it's something that we definitely have to be uh, mindful of, uh, you know, addressing moving forward. Thank you. Maria? Hey, Sean, I know that this might, your answer might change, but thinking back to just the strangeness and the adversity of, the, of COVID throughout the year, what did you learn most about yourself? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, I think that you can kind of just, you know, if you stay fully present, I think you can handle things uh, in the right manner. Uh, but I think you also learn that uh, it's really important to have great people around you that you can lean on. And there's so many people that I could name Maria, but um, I, I think what you also learn too, is that a lot of the things that we thought were the norm 
and this isn't necessarily about myself, but more just the functionality of how you can operate. You know, I mean, whoever would have thought that we'd be doing these Zoom meetings all year and it's not ideal, but um, there's ways of efficiently getting things done um, that you would have maybe never thought could have been done before. Uh, and having meetings, installing on the Zooms, you know, doing, um, you know, superimposing your video on the screen where you're teaching through that. So I think what you just learn is a lot of different ways to still be able to be efficient and navigate through the non-ideal circumstances. But what I think I have more than anything too, Maria, what you continue to learn is it's all about surrounding yourself with the right people and want to continue to get better as a leader and, and continuing to empower people around you and, um, you know, keep doing a good job of, of making sure that you're, you know, self-evaluating, but also surrounding yourself with people that are better than you and, um, you know, got a lot of great people around me and I'm fortunate for that. Kurt. Hey, Sean, because it is so fresh yet 24 hours old and, and with complete respect to the Packers, on the flight home or this morning, did you wake up thinking, had we been healthier, Coop uh, being there, or was it a, you wake up the next day and go, we need to get deeper somewhere? Yeah, I wouldn't say any of those things because, you know, we were, we were banged up, but, you know, a lot of those injuries occurred as a result of playing in the wild card round. And so, you know, you give Green Bay credit, they earned the bye, and that's why they were the one seed. And so they didn't have to play in that game and they got an automatic bid to the divisional round. The thing that I mentioned to you guys in the post game is what really resonates to me, Kurt, is, um, you know, where, you know, when I was asked earlier about where, where I'm at as a play caller, things like that, that drive, when you get the ball back after the defense gets to stop, when it's 25 to 18, it's a seven point game. Those are where the really good teams find a way to deliver. That's where me as a play caller, you got to make sure that you're activating the exact right plays that you want that give your players the best situation, the best possible scenarios to try to execute and move the football down the field. And that's what I think it takes, you know, to be able to get over the hump and to win those divisional games and get yourself an opportunity to compete for a division champ or a conference championship. And so um, that's what sticks with me from that game, because I did think our guys did a great job of kind of just hanging tough. They're a really explosive team. They did a good job of controlling the time of possession, but then got to stop, made enough plays to feel like you can kind of start to snatch and feel that momentum swinging in our direction after we convert to two point and then we get the stop. And for us not to get that, to get any points and especially a touchdown out of that possession, that's the one that stings, but they're a really good football team. You've got to play really well to go up there and give yourself a chance. And, and that's why, um, you know, they're going to be tough to beat next week at home as well. And, and not lastly on the consistency thing, teams that have that buy in the NFL do exceptionally well. And you can kind of look back, had you won a couple more games, you wouldn't have been playing the Packers. I know it's early, but have, how do you fix the consistency? Yeah, I, I think kind of like what I was saying, Kurt, you know, as you go back, you evaluate and, and you make sound decisions that are um, outside the framework of the immediate emotions that you still feel because it is so fresh. And so I think that's the first uh, order of business is to be able to do that. And every decision that we make and that I make is, is what I truly believe is in the best interest of the Rams. And sometimes, um, you know, that doesn't always accommodate everybody's happiness. And that's part of what, you know, this job entails. But I think our guys know that that's, that's where, where I'm coming from. That's what I'll always try to do and, and uh, continue to try to do it at a high level because of the expectations and the standards that I think we've set over the last handful of years. And, um, you know, that is something that you don't take for granted. Um, while also knowing you want to continue to press the envelope and find a way to, to be more relevant later on in the playoffs and just getting there um, is something that you don't minimize, but you also know, you know, what we want to be able to do and what I'd love to be able to uh, try to accomplish with these coaches and players you care so much about. Thank you, Sean. All right, we'll wrap up with these last three, Greg, Jordan, then Gary. John, you talked about play calling. We've talked about maybe the need for a deep threat receiver. We talked about the quarterback position. Overall, what would it help this offense just to have new talent, to, to, to have an, an, an injection of talent? Because the defense, you did a re really good job of turning it over this year, got, got new players in there, got a new coordinator, got a lot of results. What would, that, what would a similar reset mean to the offense? Well, I think, I think what you saw glimpses of yesterday, Greg, was two rookies that we have really uh, you know, high expectations for and, and I think have really bright futures. And Cam Akers, who's really emerged as a big-time guy the last handful of weeks. And then I thought Van showed why the game's not too big for him. 
Um, you always want to continue to push the envelope, find ways of, of adding and, and creating a competitive roster. So um, I think that's really a good step in the right direction that you can build off of specific from that game with two guys from the rookie class that have a chance to really contribute and, and be big time uh, playmakers, whether, you know, it's cam from the backfield or van on the perimeter. Um, so that's the first thing. And, um, you know, that's, that's really how I would answer that. And then I think once you evaluate, you know, your roster, your free agents, what does that look like? What are the available free agents based on, you know, kind of how we want to put it together for our whole team. And then what does the draft class look like with kind of those spots that you identify to try to fill those gaps and, and be more in alignment with what I think we can be capable of, um, you know, in terms of the, you know, the offensive efficiency and the execution and the scoring more points and all those things that uh, I have full expectation that, that we'll get back to. Have you thought in general about what, what you might lose in this free agency class? A lot of, a lot of important guys are potentially going to leave the Rams. Have you, has, that, has that crossed your mind yet? It's something that you're aware of, Greg. Um, but I think the first thing is, is now let's take a step back. Let's look at, all right, who are the guys that we want to make the priority? What does it look like their market will be? You know, I think there's so many things still to be determined, especially what exactly is that cap number? Um, that they're going to decide upon and based on all the parameters around that. And then how does that dictate and determine what is the fair market value for some of these guys that, that have played well enough to earn a lot of money and you want to see that. And it's a matter of, can you bring them, you might want to bring them back, but can you afford to do that based on still having um, a structure in place that, that limits, you know, it's easy to say you want them, but you know, if another team wants them more, you know, usually those guys, uh, you know, the money is, is usually what drives a lot of the decision-making processes and, rightfully so, because this is how they support their families. So I am aware of that. I know that there's going to be a lot of difficult decisions to be made in the near future and never fun, but, but it's also an exciting opportunity to evaluate and uh, put a plan of attack together moving forward. Jordan. Sean, I'm not sure how uh, in-depth you can get into this right now, maybe when we all get together for a film study later in the spring. Um, thanks in advance, artist. But um, <laughs> You know, because you guys, you, you, you know, losing Brandon, yes, but because you got signs sort of pointed towards you guys going toward a more intermediate catch and run, maybe more high probability um, offense in terms of your personnel, the fact that you guys didn't bring in a, a top end guy, it's sort of the, your classic deep threat and also in the draft or free agency. What were some of the factors? Because it doesn't seem to me like it's as simple as not having the burner receiver instead what were the other factors that lean you toward going toward high probability route concepts instead of those 50 50 downfield yeah there's a lot of uh there's a lot of things i think that would probably be better reserved for you know another conversation but that's not ideal i think that's a part of your offense but but to say that that's the world you want to live in that that's not the world i want to live in you know i think you have to create explosives we have to create more and there's a lot of different reasons why we weren't able to um you know and i think it, it what I'll be the first to say is, you know, it, it starts with me doing a, a better job of, of, of having a vision, implying the right things, giving ourselves an opportunity to execute those things, and then ultimately the players making it come to life. Uh, I do think it's important to have catch and run opportunities, uh, but to say that that's the world that you want to live in, like I was saying, if you do that, the margin for error is so slim. And when you're not efficient on first down, it seems like it's, uh, you know, way too much to try to overcome some of the get back on tracks, the second and longs and the third downs. And so there's a lot of things that lead into that. Uh, and that's why there's a lot of decisions that are going to be made as we move forward in terms of evaluating how we get better and how we uh, minimize, um, you know, kind of the, the inability to create some of those explosives. Um, that is, uh, you know, a collective effort, but something that uh, definitely going to be addressed. And I, I think uh, I'm confident that we'll be able to find solutions. So you would kind of say that it's not strictly personnel based, like because you guys didn't have X guy doesn't mean that, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and a Absolutely. lot of different factors. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it certainly isn't exclusive to that. And, um, you know, kind of just leave it at that. We'll wrap it up with Gary. Hey, Sean, um, because I think this might be the last time we talk to you before you guys get into free agency and whatnot, Wondering if you could just very briefly um, kind of tell us what uh, John Johnson, Leonard Floyd, and Troy Hill uh, have contributed and, you know, why they might be priorities for you guys to retain if you can. Yeah, you know, so I, I think, you know, you look at, um, you know, what John Johnson's meant to our football team, 
playmaker, uh, the versatility, all the different things that he could do for our defense. I mean, he had the green dot where he was the communicator. Um, that's something that I value so much in terms of the different intricacies of what we were doing defensively from a schematic perspective. And he's a guy that was, uh, you know, incredibly instrumental in a lot of the success we had defensively. Uh, he became a big time team leader for us. I think you really saw him grow a lot this year and we put a lot on him and he showed why he was more than capable. Um, Leonard Floyd, we talked a lot about Leonard, um, the versatility, the relentless, uh, you know, passion and really persistence that he played with ability to affect the quarterback, ability to stop the run. I think he was one of the more complete edge players in this league. Uh, Brandon had an experience with him in Chicago that, that made him feel really comfortable and confident. I felt comfortable and, and you, you know, going against him. And I thought you saw his best this year. Um, and then Troy Hill, you know, what can you say about the ball production, you know, scoring the touchdowns that he did, the versatility. You know, I think a lot of the versatility that we were able to activate with Jalen was a reflection of also Troy Hill's versatility. You know, you feel comfortable because, you know, in a lot of instances, you're saying you got this elite corner and Jalen Ramsey, and then you can bump him inside. But who's the guy that can play off of that and have the ability to play both positions as well. And Troy certainly enabled us to do that. And so all three of those guys were really big time parts of what was the number one defense in the NFL, Gary, and very important. And, uh, and they had great seasons and, and they're all going to be, uh, you know, big time topics of conversation and, and things that you want to try to figure out. And like I mentioned, you know, how does it all fit together is, is something that we're going to navigate and work through, but, those guys have nothing to, you know, they can be really proud of the body of work and the resume that they put on tape this year and what they meant to me and to our team and to our organization. Right. Hey, Coach, we appreciate you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. Likewise.